we have to really be a part of the culture if we care about the culture. So I'm calling out WAC 100 and uh, 40 Glock. 40 Glock, okay? He has a YouTuber, he's an artist. Don't know him personally, don't know WAC 100 personally, but, you know, uh, living in, in, in these days and times, you know, we're only three degrees of separation away, really a half, because I know people that know people that know people. And I know I'm going to sit in the room, especially with WAC 100 because of his influence and, and the um, power that he does have in the culture. And this is what this is all about. So I just happen to be listening, going through my YouTube, and I've subscribed to a channel where there's this Clubhouse app, and WAC 100 is on the phone with 40 Glock, had a lawyer on the phone talking about <laughs> snitching. Okay, now, they always talk about paperwork. They always talk about, oh, I got paperwork here, I got paperwork there, I got this, I got that. Okay, listen, there's two, and I'm gonna set, and I'm just, this is for my brothers, okay? Because YouTube is, is aggressive, YouTube is for my brothers, but we're gonna have these conversations. Okay, because we're men. We can sit down, we can agree to disagree, we can see and find the commonality. And the commonality, what we have is that we're black alpha males and that we've been tarred and feathered for our whole lives. So now we got to somehow stop the tarring and the feathering and be the profiteers, not the record labels, not the company somehow, because we're going to money launder our money into the community to basically save an entire generation because no one saved our generation. Because this is why we've been hoodwinked, bamboos, a lot of stress, why we're running amok now with no instructions, not knowing what to do. So WAC 140 Glock is talking about snitching. And the whole conversation, at least the part that I listened to, was about snitching. And snitching is snitching. You got direct snitching, you got paperwork snitching. Subscribe, share, get this to the individuals that you need to get this to because I'm going to set the record straight. Okay, there's two types of snitching. There's direct snitching and there's indirect snitching. Now, direct snitching is taking direct argument in a courtroom, court of law saying he did it right there. Just like I remember a case of Ray, Ray Carruth where his homeboys flipped on him and said, there, there you go right there. Ray Carruth just basically told and pointed out who was the person who basically called the whole deal. So basically that's snitching, direct, in court, paperwork, documentation. The second part is indirect snitching. Now, indirect snitching is basically, and I'm keeping it 100. We men here. Let's keep it 100. Indirect snitching. You don't go to no courtroom, right? I see. You, you don't go to the feds, right? You, 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 don't, you don't go telling, right? Okay. But what about if you own an app called Clubhouse, saying people's names, saying where set they from, putting them in the mix, putting them on the scene or putting them in an association with you or whatever you got going on. It's still snitching. Snitching is snitching. Direct snitching is in the court of law. That dry snitching, okay? Indirect snitching is telling people about what's going on because if you tell one person, then when the story gets back to you, it's going to be changed 10 different times. So if you are on Clubhouse saying somebody's name, they're writing the names down. Oh, this is so-and-so from what? Oh, he from that set? And what? You said that he give homeboy a pass? Oh, that sounded like Rico to me. You calling shots. I don't know what this is. But we having conversations on these public apps that everyone is privy to. Now, if I can actually hear that, if I'm listening to it and saying, dang, he put call, they calling out names on this. And I'm just listening and listening as an entertainment perspective. What if, you know, not me per se, but what if the listeners are investigators? What if there's open crimes and, and, and open type of situations where they really trying to connect the dots? Movies imitate life. Detectives, investigators, they do put the chain of command. They put the capo, they put this guy, this guy, and they have it. So if you call out a name, they literally talking about, man, who is this dude? Okay. And what set is he from? Okay. And then they tagging him on the Instagram. They tag him. So now let me go investigate this cat. So now he may be a person to question. Try snitching. Okay. Snitching is snitching. Okay. And I'm going to leave that right there because moving forward, we got to have these conversations because we are a prime ready for us to be on the same sheet of music and to basically be the liberators of our own people. But somehow we got to stop the rivaling tribes, get out of situations to where our 
neighborhood or our gangs or our colors could actually be our fraternity. And I heard this from Lonzo from the Wrecking Crew. That's one of the big homies of mine. And, you know, I'm going to be working with him with his podcast. And we're going to work together moving forward in 2020, 2022 to actually change the narrative because he said something, you know, that was profound. He said, hey, we got to end this gang banger. We got to end this killing culture. And he said, let your fraternity, let your gang be your fraternity. Because I've never seen a Q-Dog, woo-woo, I've never seen a Q-Dog bust on the Kappa. Q-Dogs are purple, same color as Grave Street. Kappas is red, same color as the Brims, Bloods, whatever you want to call them. Suwu, whatever. Because at the end of the day, I'm what they call a neighborhood gangster crim. 